I got into a relationship with my boyfriend just one month after he came out of prison, where he served a two-year sentence for drug dealing. It sounds stupid, but I was all over him, completely blinded by love. That's why I didn't mind that he started selling illegal substances again. He also told me it was only weed and that it would be legal soon anyway. But one day, he took my phone to send some other drug dealer an SMS. I didn't know anything about it. But then the cops came to my apartment and searched everything. My boyfriend was lucky because he was out at his friend's house. Meanwhile, the police found 200 grams of weed inside my apartment. Honestly, I had no idea my boyfriend had hid it there. But when the cops asked me if it was mine, I refused to answer and told them I wanted to talk to my lawyer first. Stupid as I was, I didn't pay for a good lawyer and got a public defender, which is a lawyer paid by the state. He looked so tired and even told me how overworked he was. But he said I shouldn't worry. This was my first offense, and therefore it was unlikely I'd be sentenced to any jail time. Well, I believed him, and because I knew if I snitched on my boyfriend that he'd be locked away for years, I took all the blame on me. I told the judge I'd been selling the weed to my friends. Unfortunately, though, she was in a bad mood that day and gave me the maximum sentence of six months in jail. I was shocked. The sentence would ruin my life. I would lose my job, and I'd be kicked out of my apartment because how was I supposed to pay rent from prison? I accepted my sentence anyway. Well, at least for two days. Then I got sick of sharing a room with some heavily overweight woman who snored like a bear. Also, my boyfriend came to visit me. He thanked me a hundred times, but didn't say sorry once. You can't imagine how angry I got. I immediately called my lawyer and told him that my boyfriend had hidden the weed inside my apartment without telling me. My lawyer then contacted the police, who went to my boyfriend's home and found more illegal substances. In the end, I got a new trial and was exonerated, while my ex-boyfriend got four years for drug selling and another two years for pressuring me to take the blame for his crime. To be honest, I don't feel bad for him at all. He was willing to destroy my life. I mean, what kind of human being would send his girlfriend to prison? Oh yeah, a criminal. Looking back, I realized that he was one of the most disgusting people I've ever met. I thought he was cool and fun to be around, but actually, he's just a selfish loser who will hopefully rot in a cell for the rest. Of Hi, I'm Mary Ann from a small town in Austria. A few years ago, I accidentally discovered that I'm adopted, and my dad doesn't know I know. Since then. All I've wanted is to find my real parents. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I never knew my mom, but I grew up with the most amazing dad. He worked as a carpenter, and even though we never had much money, I had everything I needed. And what I needed most were books. Dad would read to me every night, and I became obsessed. When I joined school and discovered the library, I felt like I'd gone to heaven, and I always preferred my friends from stories over real people. Once in sixth grade, I needed to use the dictionary, so I went to Dad's room and climbed a stool to take it down from the shelf. Just then, the stool under me wobbled, and I went crashing to the floor with some books. As I started picking everything up, I saw something that left me shook. It was a picture of a couple holding a baby, and the woman. Looked exactly like me. She had to be my mom, and the man next to her was my real dad. I turned the picture over, and all it said was Vienna 2005. That was my birth year. Were my real parents in Vienna? I snuck the picture into my pocket. Dad had kept it a secret, and I had to know why. I was waiting to confront Dad that evening, but he didn't come home. Hours passed, and he wouldn't even pick up his phone. Just then, there was a loud knock on the door. And it was Dad's friends from work bringing him on a wheelchair. Oh my God, Dad! What happened? He'd had a terrible fall at work and wasn't allowed to walk for months. And even after he fully recovered, he had a permanent limp now. I put aside all thoughts of confronting him about my real parents. I didn't want to make things harder for him. Once in the eighth grade, I'd gone with Dad to the market when suddenly he got a cramp in his leg and lost his balance. He went crashing straight into a wealthy-looking man, who in turn fell onto a food seller stall, bringing down the whole thing with him. As I helped Dad up, the wealthy man turned to him furiously. "You blind, ignorant man! Look what you've done! My suit is ruined. Do you know what it costs? 
more than your house, I'm sure. Don't talk to my father like that. He didn't do it intentionally. He has an injured leg. So why is this cripple going around causing trouble for everyone else? I want the money for my suit. You may have all the wealth in the world, sir, but you certainly don't have any compassion. My father's ailments is something he can't help. But what's your excuse for your cold, unfeeling, dead heart? Hey, kid, just shut up and... But just then, a rich-looking lady stepped forward. Don't talk like that to the child. Will this solve your problem? She waved a thick bundle of cash in his face. In two seconds, the man's anger was gone. The rich lady even gave money to the stall owner, and she offered to take me and dad home. We invited her in, and soon after, she said something completely unexpected. I'm so impressed with you, Marianne. And this might sound strange, but would you like to come live with me in Vienna? I would love to send you to a really good school. Vienna? That's where my real parents were from. This was my chance to look for them. She even said she'd hire Dad as a handyman on her estate. I was really eager to go. And within a week, we packed up our lives and moved. The lady's estate was five times larger than my school. And Dad and I were given a small cottage to live in. And just a few days later, the lady told me I'd be joining her daughter's school. On my first day as I walked up to the lady's car, a girl suddenly pushed me aside. Ooh, maid, where do you think you're going? Go clean something. Where are your manners, Lisa? This is the amazing girl I told you about, and I'd like you two to be friends. Oh, she's your charity case? She looks like her only friends would be cows and baby goats. And what is so distasteful about being friends with such lovely creatures, may I ask? Uh, no. You may not ask me anything. Who talks like that, freak? She got in and slammed the door shut. I just stayed silent during the ride, but then suddenly, Lisa made the driver stop. I'm not going to be seen with you. You can walk the last few blocks. She pushed me out and drove off. What a witch! Just as I was crossing the road, a sports car came speeding and stopped inches away from me. A cute boy stepped out from the back seat and shouted, Hey, watch where you're going, Get sick. Get in the car. I'd rather catch pneumonia. Oh, my God. Just get in. Hate me later. Reluctantly, I got in. And a minute later, we were driving up to his gigantic mansion. He quickly led me to the fireplace in the library. And my mouth was just <sighs> wide open. I... I've never seen so many books in one place in my whole life. What a treasure this is. Well, you're welcome to take some. I don't read them, and my parents are hardly ever here. I felt a bit sorry for him. That sounded lonely. And suddenly, I remembered something. Oh my God, my parents' picture. I dug through my pockets to find it all wet, and I started flapping it around to dry it. What's that, and why are you acting crazy? It's... Well, it's the only picture I have of my real parents. I told him how I discovered do is tease and mock other people. I'm sure your life isn't perfect, but that's not an excuse to be the worst version of yourself most of the time. I thought he'd be really mad, but instead, he took my hand. I'm sorry you've only seen the worst of me. I'll try to change that. He kissed me on the cheek before he turned away. And for some reason, I couldn't stop smiling all the way home. As I was walking down to the cottage, Lisa suddenly jumped out from behind a tree. Is that Vincent's car you just got off from? Why? It's none of your business, Lisa. Vincent is very much my business. I know you have a wild imagination, but don't start dreaming that someone like him could ever like you. I pushed her aside and walked off. She was crazy, as if I wanted someone like Vincent. Or did I? He was just so nice after that day. He'd come sit next to me in the cafeteria, help me carry my stuff. And one time as I was walking back, time as I was walking back home, he leapt out of a car and decided to walk with me. He told me the investigator was hopeful we'd find my parents really soon. And a few days later, when he asked me to be his date for the Christmas dance at school, I really couldn't refuse. Dad had surprised me one evening with the most beautiful dress. And at the dance, I felt like someone straight out of a fairy tale. I was searching for Vincent in the hall when I felt a gentle tap on my shoulder. Wow, you look really beautiful, Marianne. He took my hand and led me to the dance floor, and it felt like we were in our own little world. At the end of the song, he suddenly pulled me closer and leaned in to kiss me. Everyone around us was clapping and cheering as I kissed him back. 
During the evening, I went to freshen up in the bathroom, and when I returned, I found Vincent in a corner with Lisa and his friends. Wow, Vincent, you really take a challenge seriously. You said you could make any girl fall for you, and you proved it. That kiss could have fooled even me. Marion has totally fallen for your Prince Charming act. It's going to be so much fun when you dump her. That's what I was? A challenge? Vincent looked shocked as they all turned around to see me behind them. No, Marianne, wait. It, it's not what she... I suddenly slapped him hard. Why did I think you were actually a decent human being? You even pretended to help me find my parents just to convince me that you cared? You're the most vile person I've had the misfortune to meet. I hate you. No, I despise you. I didn't go to school for days. I just didn't want to see anyone's face. But one day, Dad walked into my room holding a package. A boy from your school dropped this, saying it was important. Forgive me for opening it first, but Marianne, you've known about your parents and you've been looking for them? Wait, what? Dad, I'm sorry. I just needed to know. He gave me the package as he sat down and tried to call him, but he wasn't answering my calls. I used to see him everywhere, but now... I couldn't find him anywhere. Oh, the irony. A few days later, Carson and I had an interview for our upcoming movie, and he was trying to hold my hand, but it felt really weird. Carson must have felt my sadness, and when we were asked if we were really dating, he said something really unexpected. Amanda and I are just friends. I really like her, and we tried it, but she likes someone else. Suddenly, I felt brave. Yes, it's true. And to that person, I just want to say, you know who you are, and I really miss you. Wherever you are, please see me tonight. I'll be waiting for you at my favorite park. Everyone gasped at my revelation. Even I was surprised at my public announcement, but I had to follow my heart. Alice told me that my interview created a huge buzz online, and I was being appreciated for my honesty. And they couldn't wait to see my movie. You did the right thing, girl. Now go get him. I was so nervous as I waited for him at the park later that night. But even after hours, there was no sign of him. I'd almost given up when suddenly I saw him walking in the distance and my heart leapt. I ran up to him and punched him in the stomach. I hate you. Do you know that? Uh, I'm sorry. Stop being cute and start explaining why you suddenly left. I I just thought you liked Carson, so that's why I quit. It's you who I like, silly boy. But what can I do? You are not capable of loving anyone anyway. I lied. That's not my weakness. Then what is it? It's you, Amanda. I've been a fan even before I met you. You're so beautiful and amazing. And it's driving me crazy because I'm just this poor boy and you're an unreachable star. That was literally the sweetest thing that I had ever heard in my life. You're really cute. No, you're cuter. So are we just going to keep arguing about this or are you going to kiss me? He answered me by grabbing my face and pressing his lips against mine. Finally, I got a kissing scene and it was magical.